Hi everyone and welcome to the second machine learning.net community stand-up. Uh, my name is Bree. I'm the uh, PM for ML.net on the .NET team. Uh, and I'll let the rest of the team introduce themselves. Jake. I'm Jake. I'm the dev lead on the ML.net tooling side. Hey, I'm uh, Luis. I work on Microsoft Docs. Hey, right. and we're here with Hyping, who actually works on uh, SciSharp, uh, an open source project. Uh, it looks like uh, we have another person that just joined. Hi, Ping, do you want to do a quick intro and then we'll uh, get you on later to talk about SciSharp? Uh, yeah, sure. So hello, everyone. So thank you for inviting us to attend this stand up. So I'm Hi, Ping. I'm, I'm basically in my spare time, I work for SciSharp libraries. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about me. I can talk about, uh, I can talk more later. Yeah, awesome, thanks, I think. Uh, yeah, so the first thing we wanna do is um, go over some community links. So uh, Louise, you wanna share your screen and we'll we'll uh, show off some things that the community has been doing with ML.net and machine learning? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just go ahead and share that. And cool. Just let me know when you folks can see my screen. Yeah, you are and, all good. Uh, all right, awesome. So let me pull this up here. Uh, and uh, you folks should be able to see that as well. Um, but essentially, we have a lot of really, really fun stuff uh, since last time. Uh, one of the things we have here is um, this ML.NET uh, crash course, right? And it was put together by by John, uh, who has the YouTube channel, we talked about him uh, on on the stream last time. Uh, so essentially, you know, if you're looking to learn about ML.NET and you know just sort of get up to speed with um, how you can get started with it, uh, this is a really great introduction to ML.NET. Uh, we also have for folks, it's really nice to see uh, it, our international um, sort of users, right? Uh, we have this guide of how can you can use ML.NET with Jupyter notebooks. Um, and this is in Portuguese, so for our Portuguese-speaking uh, audience, right, they can leverage this uh, guide here, and it kind of guides them through how you can essentially install .NET Interactive, which, uh, if you folks aren't familiar, it's the 
among many things, it provides a kernel to run Jupyter notebooks uh, and, and use either C Sharp, F Sharp, or PowerShell. Um, we also have, uh, well, shameless plug here. <laughs> I put together a guy very similar thing with uh, using Jupyter notebooks uh, and running .NET code. The difference is that uh, I showed how you can use Azure Machine Learning Compute Instances, which are essentially this computing environment that is that has everything set up for you. So uh, if you're looking to do machine learning, you set up a compute instance with Azure Machine Learning, and you can use that as your development environment. So one of the, one of the benefits of doing that is that it brings Jupyter Notebooks installed out of the box. It has um, all, a lot of very popular data science libraries and packages that you can just literally get up and running with your workflows as, as easy as possible. So considering the fact that it already has Jupyter Notebooks installed by default, uh, installing the .NET Interactive so that you can basically write uh, .NET code uh, inside of Jupyter Notebooks in your uh, compute instance is, is fairly trivial. And this blog post that I put together essentially does shows you that. Um, we also have some really cool posts from another fellow community member, Bruno, uh, who one of them, he talks about AutoML for ranking scenarios. And he basically just shows you how to set up a ranking uh, experiment uh, using using auto auto ML or automated machine learning for ML.net. And he has another one which he was very eager to go ahead and try the uh, the GPU uh, support that was recently announced for Model Builder and recently came out. Uh, so it's really nice to see that the community is uh, going ahead and, and trying out these things, right? Um, and then finally, if you are interested, if you can't get enough ML.net, um, you know, after today's show. You are more than welcome. I believe this is the global AI tour that's putting this event together. Um, and Alexander, who was on the on the stream last time, uh, is actually giving a presentation at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, I believe. And he's doing it on, let me make that a little bit bigger so it's probably easier to see, on MLOps, uh, you know, basically end to end operational, operationalization of ML.NET models. Uh, with MLOps.net, and that's kind of the tool that he talked about last time when he was on stream. So if you're looking to get a little bit more uh, in-depth knowledge on that particular tool, I suggest you definitely go ahead and, and check out this uh, check out this talk. Awesome. Uh, so another link that uh, we can add to the list there, actually, and I'll I'll share my screen. So I, I don't, can't remember if we talked about this last time, but Louise and I and Alexander and John, who we've talked about previously. Um, we all worked on a workshop together, which we presented first at the virtual, the first virtual community conference for ML.net and also at uh, NDC Melbourne. Uh, so essentially, if you want a really in-depth way to get started with ML.net um, from the very beginning stages to, you know, using deep learning and AutoML and MLOps, um, this is a great tool right here. Uh, you can, it's a step-by-step. -step. It can be a self-guided workshop that you can do. Um, or if you kind of already know these things, you, or you, after you learn, you can also take this and, and use it to, to share as well. So if you wanted to teach your own workshop on ML.net, you're totally welcome to take um, this workshop and as it is now or modify it to your needs. And we'll, we'll keep it updated as there's new updates uh, with ML.net as well. Uh, so this is a great one to get, to get started. And actually, if you all know Brady Gaster, he's the one who came up with this tool um, for putting together the workshop. It, it's really, really awesome step-by-step -step here. Um, so yeah, this is a really awesome one. Um, and so I also want to show off. So last time we showed off uh, ML.NET Model Builder, uh, which is one of our one of the easiest ways to get started. But I want to show the CLI as well, which is our cross-platform offering. And let me pull that up here. So the ML.NET ML.NET CLI is just a .NET global tool, uh, and I'll actually show this one first. So. Uh, if you do MLNet, and let me zoom in a bit so that you can see, um, you can see here these are the available commands. So right now, the ML.NET CLI supports classification, regression, recommendation, and, and uh, a new one that's coming up, uh, this is an internal build, is image classification. Uh, so this is really awesome. This is the same process as Model Builder, essentially, except there's no UI. Um, and again, this is cross-platform. So I'll show you an example here. Uh, let me pull up the data set that I want to use. So let's say I want to do a regression task where 
I want to predict uh, the price of taxi fare based on you know certain um, certain factors or features. So I'll show you what the data set looks like that I'm going to train with. And here you can see you've got a variety of columns. So you've got a vendor ID, a rate code, how many passengers were in the taxi, how long did it take, how, what was the distance if you're paying with card or cash, and then the fare amount. So we want to predict this fair amount, we want to uh, train a model with this data. Uh, this is how you would do it with the um, with the CLI. So you'd put in MLNet regression. Uh, all you have to do is input in your data set, how long you want it to train for, uh, and then you choose what the label column is or the what you want to predict, in this case, the fair amount. And then uh, once you hit that command with those options, um, it'll start that training. And again, uh, this is using automated machine learning or AutoML to iterate through different algorithms uh, to choose the best model for your data. So you can see it's going through a few different models here uh, in the time that I gave it to train. Uh, it came, looks like it went through four. And the R squared, which is the metric used for regression, um, at the top one looks like it's going to be actually the first one that it trained. And once it's done training, it'll actually generate that C-sharp code so that you can easily consume it. So if you go to uh, here, you can see uh, it created this, this sample regression folder with a console app and, uh, the dot, or, and the class library. And this is the same that was generated with Model Builder. And what's really cool is if you open this up, actually, let me just open this up in VS and show you um, that it has a sample console app that you can actually quickly consume the model. Uh, it already has all that code for you. So I'll let this load up. And this is this uh, is available already. Uh, it's just, like I said, a .NET global tool. And regression is one of the ones that's already included with it. And you can see here that console application. And the this is actually a class library. Uh, project. So this has the trained model, the model input, and model output. And I am enjoying Visual Studio, but I won't leave feedback right now. Uh, so program.cs for this console application that was generated. Uh, so you can see it says, you know, it's auto-generated file. And in this case, it's actually creating a new model input based on, you know, it takes the first one of my data set, but I can change this to whatever numbers I want to start testing the model. Um, and then you'll use it'll use the model to make a single prediction based on the inputs that you give it. So if we run this, and we'll give it a second to run. And this process is going to be the same or very similar for the recommendation task, which is like product recommendation, uh, as well as classification, such as sentiment analysis, spam versus not spam. Um, GitHub labeling, you know, endless number of scenarios. Uh, so you can see here, using the model to make a single prediction, um, you've got, this is the inputs we gave it, and then it predicts the fair amount to be uh, this amount. So this has been out for a little while. I also want to show uh, the newest scenario that we'll be adding, which is image classification. Um, so let me pull that up. And I have these images here, which is weather. So it's broken up into cloudy, rainy, and sunny. And you can see each one has around 30 images of either cloudy um, or rainy images. And then I want to train a model with that. So uh, the, for the, that one, it'll be image classification. And in this case, all we have to do is indicate the data set. Uh, and so image classification takes a bit longer. Um, especially with the more images you add and the more classes you have. So I've already actually trained that. Uh, and I'll just show you um, what that looks like. So it generated, again, sample image classification. And uh, I'll open up, open this one up in VS to show you how, how it's uh, similar. Give it a second to load, and then I will show. Um, it still will generate that console application with the sample um, where you can test out test images. It will also have um, the trading code and uh, and the trained model, model input, model output, and so on. 
All right, so this is the console app that it generated. It looks very similar to the regression task, but in this case, uh, the only input is the image source. And I'll actually show you what this image looks like. So this image is not part of the data set that was used to train. I already set it as uh, something else. And it's going to be this one right here. Which uh, you can see kind of looks like, I was going to say Seattle in the winter, but it doesn't quite rain that hard here, maybe more like Florida. Uh, so then I've, that's the one that I'm going to test. Again, image classification is about to be released, is not quite released yet, um, but it will be added to the CLI because we want to make sure that any scenarios that we have as part of Model Builder, we also have those scenarios in the CLI. Uh, we want to keep that scenario parity for you know, our cross-platform users or people who don't use Visual Studio. And actually something that's coming on the roadmap, uh, we actually plan on open sourcing our tooling. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, so you can see it started. Um, it always has this kind of generic text here. And all right, so took that image source and it predicted it as rainy. Um, this is kind of the probability or the score of how rainy or, or so the, in this case, you could see the middle one uh, indicates the rainy one. Um, this one's probably sunny and cloudy. Um, and it just returns this array of scores. So yeah, so that's uh, how the CLI works. Um, and that's, the, so regression's already out there, image classification will be soon. Um, but yeah, so now that we've shown off, you know, our own tooling, I want to uh, give lots of time for the SciSharp folks to, uh, to talk about, you know, what they've been working on. So I'm going to add on Hyping and also, oh. hang on. All right. Oh. So, <laughs> hey, welcome to the stream. Uh, so, uh, do you all uh, again hyping for people who might have not been on earlier? Do you both want to introduce yourselves? Okay, okay I can do first. Uh, first of all, so thank you for inviting us to attend this stand up. We are all appreciating that, and I'm the key contributor of SignShop stack community. So this community is an open source community uh, focused on .NET based like machine learning tools. So yeah, before before we doing work at SignShop, I've been working on like AI ML for several years and still in the process of transiting from chain traditional software development to like AI ML engineer, updating my skill set. And I've been involved into some of the AI projects in the past years, such as like AI chatbot platform, like recommendation systems in like graph embedding and computer vision in deep learning and other stuff related to machine learning in Python and the .NET programming languages. So that's basically it, yeah, about myself. So I will hand off to like Hannah. Hello, my name is Meinro Frechheis. Um, I'm known as Hinan on GitHub. And uh, I, I, um, I'm a, a C-sharp fan and uh, I was looking for, for um, AI uh, libraries and, and stuff and and, and that's how I learned, uh, get to, uh, got to know Hyping. Um, <clears throat> then we, uh, we worked together on, on tensorflow.net for some time. Um, and, um, and I then uh, started to work on uh, NumPy net and, and, and Python included. Those are my main projects. Um, the, so Hyping is is, uh, is is investing a lot of work in in the native port of, of TensorFlow. Um, he's translating all the Python code into C sharp, and and that takes really 
a, a huge amount of effort to do that. And um, I took a quite a, a different road. Um, I didn't uh, have so much time to to really go into deep and, and, and translate everything. So I tried to, to go a different road. I, I um, found that awesome project that's called Python Net. And uh, I used that to to wrap the complete NumPy API uh, for C Sharp, so that you can uh, put that pull that in as a new get and and start uh, start using NumPy. And for that, I also um, uh, introduced a, a project that is called Python Included, um, which is essentially a um, a deployment uh, a tool, uh, an installer that will take uh, embedded Python installation. Um, you can either embed it in, in a .NET assembly or you can download it from the internet um, uh, and use that uh, to, to install whatever Python version you need on your computer uh, without uh, having to rely on a pre-existing Python uh, environment. So what people are doing with uh, Python, uh, I mean, with Python included, um, is, for instance, they they use that to, to create uh, Azure services that uh, depend on some Python library or on NumPy or whatever. Um, they embed all the Python tools that they need. Uh, and uh, load that up onto a, an Azure server and, and consume it from C-Sharp. So um, that's a very interesting thing. And uh, I've got lots of uh, um, a positive response uh, to it. Um, and uh, for uh, with respect to, to NumPy Net, um, I wrapped all the NumPy uh, AP calls, which are about 500. Um, and did this in only two weeks. So uh, it's a, it's a, a very uh, a very uh, clever approach uh, that that allows us to to supply a whole library for C sharp that wouldn't be uh, uh, there in, in in that completeness without the um, the idea of generating all the C sharp uh, functions that call into Python net. Um, but uh, there is, of course, there are uh, drawbacks. So uh, Python Net is generally very slow, and uh, uh, if you if you uh, are trying to do things like going over the data, uh, do something in NumPy, uh, copy the thing back into C Sharp, doing something there, and copy it back to, to Python, and and looping over the data all the time, then it will be much too slow to, to do that uh, with NumPy net. So, um, but of course, NumPy is a very uh, nice library where you can put the, a huge data array in. You copy it in with Marshall copy. It's very fast, actually, to copy a huge bunch of data to Python, then uh, leave it there and, and do the whatever tasks you want to do. Uh, in Python, in in the native part of, of NumPy, and and for that it's really useful. And um, I think that maybe that approach uh, would also work well with uh, TensorFlow. So I'm thinking of doing something like that for TensorFlow too, um, because uh, the nice thing, the nice thing about TensorFlow is you you download the data into it, and and then you have that computation graph, and it runs in TensorFlow, uh, and you don't have to copy uh, data back and forth. So um, uh, it wouldn't work well for eager execution. What Hyping is working now on, uh, which is very fast in C Sharp, it's even faster than Python. Um, but maybe the graph execution that maybe the, the, the Python net approach uh, that I'm uh, doing with NumPy could be quite uh, 
a nice thing to do. Um, but I'm not there yet. Uh, so if if, if, if uh, people would like to see this, then I really uh, they should come up to me and, and um, I would start working on this because I already have the code generator and I uh, just need to write the parser for the documentation of uh, TensorFlow and then use my code generator to, to generate all the AP calls. Okay, that's in a nutshell what I was doing. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so I want to, well, so a lot of people on the stream prob that are watching probably don't have data science backgrounds or, you know, know a ton about machine learning quite yet. So um, do you want to maybe as you're, you know, as you're explaining things, you can explain what is TensorFlow um, and so on, just to, to make sure that uh, people who might not know can, will, will know what that is. Um, and also hyping, I think you were going to share your screen, right? And show, show us some things. Uh, sure, I can. I can show. Maybe some people don't know Sunshine yet, so I can give give people like some quick induction induction about Sunshine yeah. stack. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, um, so first thing I want to talk about is like why Sunshine exists. I think, so, are you sharing your screen yet? Uh, not yet. Okay. Maybe later. So, okay. so I need to talk about like why we need SciShop and what does SciShop do. So, so we are trying to create a pure donut based machine learning tool set. So did so th those tools are like consist with the Python ecological experience, like. It will make model migration easier and have the lower learning curve because the syntax is the same as the existing documentation in the Python world. So why why do I have this kind of idea? So from myself, so as a .NET software developer, it's not easy to enter the field of like machine learning world software development and machine learning are like two very different patterns, especially for like machine learning model development, which is completely different from like web development. So web development is all about like concurrency, security, database, asynchronization, and like design patterns. And, but for like AI world, Model development is kind of more like fetching data, extract the data, like evaluate the result accuracy and the algorithm, and all about statistics, math, and math. So it, 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 so it, it sounds like a very totally different things for donut developer. So what we are trying to solve is how to like have .NET developers to make their own <laughs> ML model in their own familiar way. So obviously we need to develop a series of like basic tools to enable developers to do like machine learning task. But at, at, at this stage, how do we achieve this goal? So in the Python world it's been involving like decades, there are a lot tons of like learning materials and documentations and papers on the internet. So, but most of the code is written in Python, and people have to use get ha, have been used to the uh, the Python based machine learning ecology, especially in terms of like grammar and the thinking pattern. If so. If we can like make tools that are trying to like mimic the syntax of Python and add the compilation, the compilation error detection in for the .NET community, I think that would be like benefit the .NET developers. Think about it: people can use almost like ninety percent exactly the same syntax to develop ML models 
without like adopting new syntax that means people can like lower the learning curve curve and invest less effort to use machine learning in their projects mm. so for the first principle in our libraries is like a keep same syntax and per even for the parameter de definition same as the python functions as much as possible even for the like naming conversion i know some people like hate this makes making them like uncomfortable some people uh say i it's it, it's it's like a normal it's it, it, it's different with the like the mainstream .NET projects, so people leave it. But it's a hard decision in the terms of like compromising, compromisation. So, so but there are still many people like it because they don't have to learn new functions, don't have to learn new APIs. And the most advantage is they can like copy paste the existing Python code, the model, the model uh, algorithm, just add some like uh, like VAR uh, keyword be uh, before the the variables, so everything it will work, uh, everything's working, so it. Yeah, it's the variable thing. I, I will demo uh, you. you. Mm. Yeah, we have uh, we have some code snippets on, on the front pages of our GitHub uh, projects where you can see the Python code and the C Sharp code side by side. Uh, and uh, you see how, how uh, how similar it looks is just just the language uh, differences yeah. are there. Uh, the rest is all the same, and yeah. that's a huge advantage. Even though everything is yeah. uh, lowercase and, and, yeah. and some things people like, that. like it, that's some people hate this. Uh, so, mm -hmm. one one thing I wanted to call out too is being really cool about your your projects is just that um, it's not just like a syntax thing and familiarity, but also like how you publish your applications, how you get them out to users, all of that can stay the same with C Sharp. So you don't have to you know, learn Python to go use those libraries and then figure out how to package them and how to get them on people's machines or on you know, their, their other devices. So I think it's a really, really cool project to, to yeah, bring in dot, to the .NET. So, okay, that's all the introduction about the C Sharp community. And I, because they are, we, we, we still have like half an hour, right? Maybe we have 10 or 15 minutes to demo how how the Sunshop library works. Okay, I will share my screen. Uh, it should be a second too. Okay, okay. Can you it should be able to see now. Okay. So first of all, I want to show you the links. Sunshine repo links is here. The links is here. So we have uh, several uh, libraries. Uh, one of the mo one of the most uh, popular library repo is TensorFlow.net is a uh, TensorFlow binding. And uh, another one is like Boshop. Boshop is a uh, AI chatbot platform. And the first, the other is the NineSharp. NineSharp is uh, totally written in, uh, in, 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 in .NET standard 2.0. It's not a binding is totally 
totally delete written in C sharp code. So this is the numpy.net is is maintained by Hanan. Uh, the ks.net is returned by decap. Uh, sharp save is is a library for like it, 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 it's, it's also uh, the binding that that the open save is binding okay i have a question with, with the with the keras.net we've actually been getting a lot of um community members asking when when net will get a keras like api um can you tell us a little bit about the state of this and whether or not it's oh, okay. like, ready for people so to, this to this keras uh, this keras.net is uh is rely on python environment so it's it, it's it doesn't so it's an is another approach as Hannon said is a like shortcut to build up the e ecosystem because for C sharp developer they can we, we can they can use the C sharp syntax to use the existing uh Keras. You we can see from this. So, but this library is rely on Python environment. So another thing is I want to show you is like I am working on the um, like native Keras version is here. It's a very cool thing. See from these examples. Oh, by the way. This example repo you can find from from here. Yeah, this is the main example example repo. So there are like several examples to help donut developer to get started with the machine learning. And so we are working on the master branch. Master branch is is built based on TensorFlow 2.0. So it's not uh, it's not stable yet. We are in development intensively. Uh, if you want to use it in your production environment, you should go to like TensorFlow like one point. This, this branch. This branch is is production ready. So let me give you a like a quick demo for how does the TensorFlow.net works. When you click the start, so you will see all the examples we are working on because this is the master branch is not stable uh, so some of the example doesn't work so you you have to wait so we will fix that uh, i will run a very simple one like basic operations so i I set a breakpoint here. So I want to show you the excited features for this, for uh, the master branch. And it's, it's a binding for TensorFlow 2.0. So the most exciting thing is you, it, it can run in the eager mode. So what's the eager mode? Eager mode is the, if you have experience in TensorFlow 1.0, so you definitely like it because you can see the result immediately, even in the debugging model. Uh, I should show, I can go through like one step by step, step by step. Let me, uh, let me just, uh, just to say that TensorFlow has two modes. One is the graph mode and one is eager mode. And in graph mode, you, you have to design your computation graph uh, up front. And then uh, 
it will calculate everything inside and give, just give you a result and uh, it is hard to 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 look into the calculation and see any uh, yeah. intermediate results and eager mode is uh, completely different it uh, you can uh, debug the complete calculation because you uh, you do every step in in your code by yourself and uh, so it's it's a lot easier to to learn with that and to uh, to code that um, if you are a beginner and if you don't know exactly what uh, the things are doing and so on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hannah, for explanation of that. So here in in TensorFlow 2.0, you will see the result immediately in the debugging like a window. See, this is like T TensorFlow add three add. Uh, to add three is like equals five. You can immediately see the result. So you don't have to define your like placeholder and the variables in advance. So this is the extremely difference between TensorFlow 2.0 and 1.0. TensorFlow 1 and 2, that's the huge difference. So here, see all the result comes up immediately. See, this is for like of product, product. Then you can see the result here. So that means the data scientist can use .NET to develop their like eight, uh, models and debug the models very convenient. So this is a very basic uh, operations demo. We can run a more uh, complicated example. Uh, we can show this linear regression. I can This example is still running in the eager model. So you can see every step, how the model running. I will show you, let me show you. Uh, so this is the basically the linear model uh, formula. So you will see the result immediately from the debugging model and the gradient descent and apply the gradient descent immediately see the result so i will see once once the apex runs like 100 you can print out the um, the result of the model. So this is the loss. You will see the value, the loss value in this window. And uh, you can print it as well. This is the stochastic gradient descent optimizer. You can define before the iteration okay this is the linear regression example so another example is we can do like keras so i will show you how the keras works uh, it should be eight This is the minced. Use the minced data set. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what that is for people who might not know? Uh, minced data set is uh, like public data set for like uh, handwritten the digitals. Uh, I think 
we can get a lot of information from the uh, means. Uh, okay, I can sh show you the how the Keras works. For Keras, we have two different way to um, create the Keras model. One way is is customize your model in uh, a programming way, like here. Uh, this is to here. So yeah, this is the this is one of the approach to create your Keras model. Is you can inherit from the base class model, then add your layers here. The most important thing is you have to override this function. So this is so this this class is very like very uh, look looks very similar with the Python version. So so uh, sorry to interrupt you here, uh, but um, so you're showing off care a Keras like functionality here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is inside of sensorflow.net, correct? So uh, why would I want to, first of all, what is Keras and why would I want to use that uh, to build my neural networks? Oh, if uh, Keras is a like, high level API to, like, to design for deep learning. When you use Keras, build your neural network, it will be very, mm, very simple. You just add layers. If so, the Keras is like uh, Keras is like uh, building blocks. So you can like add whatever layers you can add more specific, like more uh, neurons, whatever you want. You can add layers, whatever number you want to add, and it supports many. It, it, it has built in many layers. If you take a look at here, uh, you will see many building layers. You can do, do it immediately, like dense, convolutional, like LSTM, RNN, pulling layer is already built in. So you just need to like com combine them into a new neural network. So you can develop your neural network very like very easily. Looks like a building a Lego. So another another approach to build your Keras is like a, use the Building models like sequential. I have another example um, here. Uh, here, so this is a this is a, like a more like uh, easy way to build your neural network. You just add different la layer in the network. So I think people, most of people, uh, like this way to build his own network. Mm, this way, another way I just said is it's more like you want to control more in your network. You should use you should use this way. You should use this way. Yeah, define customize your model. This way is have more power control to your model. This way is more simple, but less control. So I think the time, I spent too much time to talk about this. Bryce, so any plan, I think? Yeah, no, that was awesome. Uh, hey, you. Showing that off. 
you should you should quickly add that uh, one thing that that blew me uh, from uh, from my seat is uh, when he compared the uh, eager mode in C sharp against uh, eager mode in in Python. It was faster in C sharp. I so that is, I haven't uh, prepared the uh, maybe comparison. Yeah, I have. Haven't okay. the demo, and I'm not prepared. Oh, that's okay. Um, there is one thing that I wanted to mention, which we haven't talked about, is so uh, ML.NET actually offers a uh, high-level image classification API um, for uh, training image classification models using a method called um, transfer learning. And I'll actually share my screen. Um, this was a blog post about it that Cesar wrote a while back. Um, and it actually runs on top of TensorFlow.NET which is really, really awesome. So um, you can kind of see here uh, what, uh, actually, let me go back, what that looks like. Um, so you've got your tensorflow.net, uh, C-sharp bindings, and then on top of that, um, we've got ml.net. Um, and it looks, I think there's some sample code here. Yeah, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, if you've seen uh, ml.net code before, you know that you first have your ML context. Um, in this case, you're adding a trainer for uh, image classification. Um, and this is uh, where that image classification API comes in. Uh, and this is built on top of tensorflow.net, so all of Hypen's work. Um, but yeah, uh, so we've got about 10 minutes left for questions. Um, Jake or Louise, did you have any questions uh, top of mind? Um, I do, but uh, I could probably hold them off until, you know, perhaps the some of the questions from the chat are yeah. answered. Um, so I will try and go through the chat and see. Um, I was just going to add too that we're, we're, we're then, we're being model builder in the CLR then written on top of this image classification oh. API, which is using the tensorflow.net. So we're, we're a huge, um, huge fan of, of tensorflow.net and trying to make it really easy to consume with, with model builder in the CLI. Yep. Yep. Um, Scrolling through the comments, there's a lot. Was there anything? So there's there's one that kind of um, you know part of it was answered, uh, mm -hmm. but maybe uh, Hai Ping or Anna could uh, go ahead and maybe provide additional context to this, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, is has SciSharp rewritten these libraries to run on .NET, or have has it just adapted the native ones to support .NET? Hannah, can you explain this? Um, okay, so there is uh, the uh, TensorFlow.net is uh, is uh, based on the C++ core of uh, of TensorFlow, which is uh, as everyone knows from Google. Um, but uh, it also has a Python layer on top, and the Python layer is, uh, albeit thin, it is very complex. Uh, and what uh, we did is we completely removed the Python layer and directly call into the C++ uh, core, which is the, the, the number crunching engine uh, from, uh, from Google. Um, and uh, um, the, the same uh, goes for uh, some other libraries like NumSharp, they are completely designed uh, or written in C sharp uh, and uh, also C, uh, sharp CV, but there are some libraries where we do uh, just call into Python, like NumpyNet, um, uh, like KerasNet, and uh, and there's also a TorchNet, which is not complete. But uh, there is those two approaches because it is enormously much uh, a, a huge amount of work to 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 convert all the python code and uh, i don't know how many develop developers are working at google uh, on tensorflow but they are chucking out new versions faster than we can uh, convert uh, the old versions to to c sharp so uh, there is kind of those two approaches uh hyping is is really awesome all the work he puts into that but he's always trailing behind. So, um, and and um, and uh, 
that is why I was focusing more on the on the generative approach and uh, and on to calling into Python so that um, some libraries are uh, can be um, can be uh, supplied to to C sharp uh, users and consumers uh, quite fast and, and and in a very uh, complete way. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Uh, Luis, what, what do we got next, question-wise? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned, uh, well, first of all, we can maybe ask this one here. Uh, are there Rapids AI in this? Or I guess Rapids AI support? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's Rapid AI. <laughs> Could you uh could you maybe clarify that question, Janisku? And in the meantime, we'll perhaps move to another one. Um, we have this other one also that asks. Uh, you mentioned that it was faster, um, and there was a question for clarification in terms of what exactly was faster when you ran uh, you know some of these algorithms, train some of these models with C sharp. Okay, I can answer this question. So the faster means I'm saying. You know, in for TensorFlow, the many people know TensorFlow is all about Python part. They many people doesn't know the C plus part, C API underlying the Python. So it, Python is a binding uh, above the C API. Uh, for for the TensorFlow one point one version one, many work, many work. Uh, for example, when you define uh, when you define a tensor, you have to use like a Python interface. Uh, so you um, uh, like you have to like. A, uh, write an array like one two three. So first of all, the Python environment uh, allocated the memory for this array, and it copy into in the pass into the C API. In the in the C API, it copy the memory to uh, to like copy a memory. And convert to like C, convert to the C, C tensor, tensor in programming C. So there are many, you know, the Python is a weak language. So you have to convert, uh, convert the data type, keep like keep converting between uh, between the Python and the C. So they will cause many like cost between in the communicate communication. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I answered the question. Yeah, I think that helps. So it's mainly in like the type conversions between the the native and Python, where where you think a lot of the the performance improvement came yeah. from. Yeah, and and, and C sharp is faster than Python, uh, and uh, and so um, especially with the eager mode, there is a huge performance uh, increase if you use uh, C sharp. And I have a follow-up question on that. So eager mode just means like you're feeding all the data to it versus it being grabbed like one by one or what's, what's the, how do you, how would you describe the difference between the two modes? The, I think the most different, different you can, for, for, for end user is in graph mode, you cannot get the result immediately. You have to run, the whole graph from beginning to end, then you can print out, you can get the result. But for eager mode, you can print every result in every step 
one by one step that's the big difference cool yeah Okay, right, we've got, I think, a few more questions here. Uh, let's see, we've got, um, how's the relationship between SciSharp and .NET interactive efforts? Are there collaborations or overlaps? Um, I have to say, when we start, start the Jupyter Notebook, the Microsoft hasn't did this, uh, like stable version for Jupyter Notebook kernel. So we have to write write it in our own. So we uh, we have our own like IC sharp core for Jupyter kernel. But after like half a year, so Microsoft launched his like official version for the Jupyter kernel and then the like chai.net yeah they i think there's no collaboration between this library and donut interactive but absolutely they have overlap any questions that i'm missing laser jc Yeah, there's 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 a few, but I, I noticed that we're also running running low on time. Um, so, in the interest of time, uh, what is the best uh, way to reach you folks, and how can you know if uh, folks on the call uh, want to contact you and ask you more questions? Um, what's the best way to get in contact? You mean for Sancha? Yep. Uh, we you can uh, all the work. We we have done or uh, in progress or it's all in the public is in the Git, Git, GitHub. You can you if you have any question, you can submit issues on the corresponding projects, and you can also email to us to the official like email address. And at the same time, at the same meantime uh every pr and the comments are all welcome we have a github channel uh that's all yeah yeah. yeah we have we Git channel time. as well awesome. yeah and we have that beautiful website uh and you find everything you need to know about uh, scishop on this website it's uh uh, https scisharp.github.io yeah thanks for like Hannah create this beautiful website <laughs> love the purple <laughs> <laughs> very dot uh, <laughs> yeah this is awesome thanks a ton for for coming on today and talking about scisharp um so yeah anyone else who might have questions for them um you can uh, reach them on their GitHub or on their on this site right here. They have a contact us uh, that you can reach out. So yeah, and hopefully we'll have you on the community standup again. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, appreciate sure. it. Yeah, thanks for everyone tuning in. Um, and you know, you can always reach out to any of us with questions if you got them. So yeah, yeah. all right. Thanks everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.